Thus saith the Lord, you will see an increase in the anointing, in the tangible presence, in the experience, in the miracles, in the signs, and the wonders as you demonstrate in your life that you believe that you've received. Okay, listen, John 20, 22, 2022. It says that evening the disciples gathered together and because they were afraid from the Jewish leaders, they had locked the doors. But suddenly Jesus appeared among them and said to them, peace to you. Then he showed them the wounds of his hands and his side. They were overjoyed to see the Lord with their own eyes. Jesus repeated his greeting, peace to you. And he told them, okay, you want your big prophetic word? This is all I've got for you. Just as the Father has sent me, now, 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 I am sending you. You, all that happened on the beach was him saying to us, as the Father has sent me, I am sending you. The only reason we got media attention because there were so few people that were outside sharing the gospel. And the LA Times was like, well, this must be a revival because Christians are acting like Christians. <laughs> then taking a deep breath, he blew on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Yesterday, how many of you experienced the Holy Spirit? Okay, I have bad news for you. Sometimes when Larry's like, will you pray for people to receive the Holy Spirit? I'm like, I'm not really sure. Because if you receive the Holy Spirit, you better do something. Because now you're going to be accountable to that. Some of y'all need to read Final Quest by Rick Joyner and get the fear of God back into you. I read those last few chapters and I'm terrified. I'm literally terrified. I'm like, have I made idols out of Christian preachers? Have I made idols out of ministry? Have I not shared the gospel enough to the people that God wants me to share the gospel to? What have I done with the things that God has given me? He says this, this is literally in the Bible, guys. Like the most prophetic word you can get is right here in scripture. It says, just as the Father has sent me, I'm now sending you. He breathes on them. He says, receive the Holy Spirit. I send you to preach the forgiveness of sins and people's sins will be forgiven. Do you know why he breathed on them to receive the Holy Spirit? It wasn't for healing. It wasn't for deliverance. It wasn't for impartation. It wasn't for a mantle. It wasn't for vision, signs, or wonders. This is his disciples. Guys, this is crazy. Why did Jesus blow on them to receive the Holy Spirit? Because they needed the Holy Spirit to preach the gospel. For five years, I wrestled with why I wasn't seeing signs, wonders, or miracles in my life. Have any of you ever felt like that? Some of you, half of you, half of you are like, I raise the dead every day. Good for you. That wasn't my story. I would look at the life of Heidi Baker, and I'd be like, do, some of the, do these people have like magic fairy dust? It's like they had a different Holy Spirit. Do you ever feel like that? No? Yeah, right? I'm like, I see my friends Rick and Jessica here. They're like two of the most hungry people ever. And they're just like, anytime I'm at something, they're like, I'm going to that. And they're like always going to these different people and different conferences. And there's just a hunger here. And here's what God is looking for. He's looking for hungry people that will go wherever they need to go. Right? And so here's what happens. Okay, so I'm like, 
frustrated and mad because some people have the magic fairy dust. And I, I'm like, I gave up everything. We moved to California. We're doing street evangelism and nothing's happening. Okay? And I said to Parker, I go, I can't do this anymore. I can't do this anymore without the Holy Spirit. I read all the Smith Wigglesworth books, all the Tozer books. And then all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit just drops into me a revelation that changed my whole life. And I believe that this revelation is for you today. When it says that he blew on them, it was that same, the only other time that word in the Greek has been used was when he breathed on Adam. And it's that life breath. It's that new creation. It's literally going from one state of living to another altogether. And when he breathed on them to receive the Holy Spirit, they were now required to live this brand new life. But this brand new life required for them daily to preach the gospel. They were anointed for a purpose and not for a feeling and not for an experience. As soon as I understood this, I said, I believe that I've received that Holy Spirit. Some of you right now, if you believe that you've received the Holy Spirit, I need you to lift up a hand right now. Okay. Holy Spirit, right now I ask that you deposit a confirmation in every single person that has their hand raised right now. Jesus, I thank you that you would increase our belief through manifestation. Now let us stay reminded that we have received not just for ourselves. Because of course you'll clean up house. Of course you'll deal with the inner things. Of course you'll heal us, sanctify us, justify us. But we have received so that we can go and preach the gospel. I believe every single person with their hand raised right now, this year, and this is a word I will say, it is a thus saith the Lord. You will see an increase in the anointing, in the tangible presence, in the experience, in the miracles, in the signs, and the wonders as you demonstrate in your life that you believe that you've received. Once you, listen, this literally changed everything for me. Once you believe you've received the Holy Spirit and you start changing your schedule, your finances, your time, your priorities to act like someone that is here to bring good news to this nation, Watch what he will do with you. I swear, I promise you, guaranteed. Watch what will happen. This is about to be one of the craziest years because guess what the Lord told me? The saints are going to start believing that they are filled with the Holy Spirit. These altars are about to change and they're about to be filled with unsaved people. They're about to be filled with unsaved. And guess what's going to happen? All of you that raised your hands, you're the workers of the harvest. And you and I, we're going to go out. And Christian conferences are about to change radically. Here's why. There is a rise of the saints that are going to start seeing the person next to them that smells like alcohol. And before the session even starts, they're going to say, repent of your sins, brother. I smell the alcohol on you. 
Repent of your sins. We won't need the altar call to drive us to repentance because our brothers will be to the left and to the right and we're going to start getting words of knowledge and visions and we're going to start sharing with the people next to us before the sessions even start. We've started to see it happen already. Jesus, okay, here's the gospel, guys. I'm going to tell it to you so that you know how to repeat it. Because that's one of the biggest problems we face in America is people don't know what the gospel is. I can share the gospel in under 30 seconds in an elevator. Start practicing in your room. Start looking in the mirror and just start practicing sharing the gospel. You're waiting for this moment. The moment won't come. If you're a doctor, you're going to practice how to do surgery before you do surgery, right? Right? Isn't an eternal soul more important than anything you're giving your time to? Okay, here's the gospel. We are made to be in relationship with God. We are made in his image. Like God created us. God created all those people you hate on social media. He created them because of sin. And all of us have sinned. Every single one of us because of that Because of his holiness, we are separated from him. But because of his love for us, and we celebrate it every Christmas, but we don't understand it every Christmas. Because of his love for us, he sent down Jesus for us. I can't believe that he sent Jesus for us. He sent Jesus for us. And Jesus, his whole life, spent his whole life demonstrating to us the new life available to us here on this earth. That if we would turn away from our sins, that we could come into relationship with the Father. And then Jesus, because of us, dies on the cross for our sins, every single sin. And so the reason why he breathes on them to receive the Holy Spirit so that they can preach forgiveness of sins is because every single person you see in the grocery store is separated from God. And the reason we need the Holy Spirit is because we're afraid of rejection. I hate going to prophetic conferences. I'm afraid of rejection. I hate being in green rooms. I'm afraid of rejection. It doesn't go away. It doesn't matter how anointed you get. We need the Holy Spirit to get over ourselves so that we can say to someone, friend, your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. And Jesus not only died, but he rose again. And because he's alive, here's the best part. He gives us all, every single one of us, access, full access to the Holy Spirit. You can hear the voice of God. That is freaking crazy. When I realized that, I was like, I can't believe I grew up in church my whole life and no one told me I could hear God's voice myself. That I could read the Bible and the Holy Spirit would speak to me through his word. That I could go to sleep and ask God to give me dreams and visions and revelations, and he would. That I would go into the street and preach the gospel, and people would decide to follow Jesus. The first time someone gave their life to the Lord, I just couldn't believe that I could invite someone into salvation for eternity. We have to get urgent about this.